welcome to Bed Crime Stories Podcast. I'm your host, T. And if true crime is your jam, and like me, you enjoy delving into unsolved cases, trying to figure out who done it, please consider subscribing. Good day, my true crime friends. I hope you're having a lovely morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are. Today, I want to talk a little bit more about Rosemary Bly. It's so important to humanize victims. Too often they fade into the background when they really should be center stage. We've seen this in the Summer Wells case, where all the crazy people involved in the crazy circus have overshadowed the reason we're all talking about 110 Ben Hill Road. All this craziness has pushed Summer to the background. Today, I want to paint as vivid a portrait as I can with the limited knowledge we all have of Summerwell's missing aunt, Rosemary Bly. Summer's aunt, Rosemary Bly, an aunt that she never knew, but likely knew of, disappeared from St. Croix Falls, Wisconsin on August 21st of 2009. Rose was just 21 years old at the time of her disappearance, and a few weeks away from her 22nd birthday. Married for just six months to Chris Larson and a stay at home mom to their two baby girls, one 19 months old and one just nine months old. Rose, by all accounts, was someone who adored her daughters and would never have willingly left them. Despite her petite stature, somewhere between five feet and five feet two inches and 110 pounds. The brown-haired, brown-eyed young woman with the pretty smile was said by her best friend to be a bit of a spitfire at times. Rose had some fire in her, and she also had some sass. The youngest of Jim Bly and Candy Harr's three daughters, Rose grew up in the small rural town of Grantsburg, Wisconsin. Rose's older sisters are Candace Bly, and Jeannie Bly. According to Rose's mother, Candy Har, Rose loved collecting rocks, and she wanted to become a writer of children's books. A friend of the family added that Rose also loved to hike, to hit the casino every now and again, and to hang out with her girlfriends. Rose was also a horse lover. She loved riding them, taking care of them, She helped with her dad's horses, as well as those of her father-in-law. A week before she vanished, Rose took a tumble off one of the horses while barrel jumping. In that fall, she hit her head on the ground. Her mother, Candy Har, has said that Rose complained of headaches after the fall and that she urged her daughter to seek medical attention. However, there's no evidence that Rose ever visited a doctor about the fall. Many people who know the family have said that whatever hit she took was not actually all that severe. Rose's best friend from high school had this to say about Rose. Rose was quiet and probably one of the kindest people I knew. I remember the first day meeting her. We were juniors in high school. I was new and I knew absolutely no one. We were in an after-school ITV class together, and I needed to find a ride home, but hadn't a clue who to ask, and was afraid no one would because I lived so far out in the country. I lived in the Barrens. She heard me talking to my mother on the phone, and she said, what's the problem you have? I told her, oh, I need to find a ride home, but I kind of live far out of town. She said, well, where do you live? And I said, you probably have never heard of it, but I live off Olchin Road. The look she gave me was in awe, like she was in shock. And I said, what is it? She said, I live right up the road from you. I'll give you a ride. From that day on out, she and I believed it was fate. God who led me to her and her to me and we became best friends after that. She was one who kept to herself, but was kind to everyone, but also a spitfire 
who didn't care what others thought of her. She was an amazing friend and an amazing mother. She loved those girls more than anything in the world. Grantsburg is a small town. Neither of us came from money. There was never any judgment from her. And when I was having a bad day, she always knew how to make me laugh with her stupid jokes. She was my soul sister, and I just pray there can be closure someday. End quote. That almost brings me to tears. To lose your best friend in that way is like unbelievably tragic. When Rose was in middle school, her mother suddenly left her father and took off with a female friend. Jim Bly suddenly found himself a single parent raising three young daughters. According to a friend of the Larson family, Jim had trouble handling his eldest daughter, Candace, so much so that he felt the need to put her into foster care. That same friend of the Larson family has said that after Rose vanished, her sister Jeannie quietly devoted herself to trying to solve the riddle of what happened to her sister Rose and where she may be. And Jeannie continues that battle to this day. Jeannie is married and has children of her own. Children that she allegedly does not allow her mother, Candy Har, to see. According to this family friend, the reason that Har is not allowed to see Jeannie's children has nothing to do with S.A. or any other type of abuse. It does not appear that Jeannie has much contact, if any, with Candace. I did see a post that Jeannie made on a Facebook page, however, the day after her niece, Summer Wells, went missing. Jeannie wrote this, Please help us bring our niece home. If you want to learn more about the disappearance of Rosemary Bly, check out my other videos about the case. Now, do me a favor, and if you enjoyed this content and you want to hear more, please hit that like button. It's a free way that you can help support my channel. Until the next time on Bed Crime Stories.